it's uh, something I've I've never seen before. Deep in the Caucasus mountains of Azerbaijan lies a small town called Krasnaya Slavada. In Russian, that means Red Village, but the locals of the village call it Grmizi. What's special about Grmizi? Grmizi is the last known shtetl on earth. A shtetl is an all-Jewish town, typically with a couple hundred people living there, and prior to the Holocaust, there were hundreds, if not thousands, of these shtetls all over Europe and Central Asia. But they were all destroyed by the Nazis and later communism, so nothing really remained from those places. All of the inhabitants were either killed or moved out to other places where they'd be more welcome. But there's one place in the world that has been continuously inhabited by Jews and only Jews for hundreds of years, and that is Grmizi. The following video you are about to see is from my trip to this small mountain village in Azerbaijan. Okay, I just arrived in Krasnaya Slavada. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly, but it's Kermizi or Kuba, as it's known locally. It's a small Jewish town in Azerbaijan. I'm in my hotel room. Cute little place. I'm running late, of course, to the morning prayers, chakras. Um, so I'm just leaving the hotel right now, and I'm going to have to run over to this, to the shul, to the synagogue. Um... I'm not sure I know the way either. Like it's sort of like straight down the main road. But then at some point you have to make a left and I'm not sure where that is. But hopefully I'll find some people who can help me. College, college, yeah. College? Da. Oh wow. Synagogue or college? Ah, da, da. College. Synagogue. Okay, so I'm just, uh, I just got a hitch from a nice Jew. His name is Yosef. And uh, he's gonna take me to the synagogue, which is awesome. I love the. This is one of the benefits of being in an all Jewish town. Uh, you know, we're all brothers. We can all trust each other. And you get into the car with a total stranger. And before I even, you know, just as he saw me walking on the street, he already knew where I wanted to go. And now I'm gonna be a little bit less late to the prayers. Okay, so. Chakras, the morning prayers are done. And now I'm about to go into an old synagogue where a class is being given, a Gemara, a Talmud class is being given right now. Take a look. So these are local Jews. Uh, there's a rabbi sitting at the front. He's giving the class, and the rest of them are locals who live here. This is where the ark used to be, the Aron Kodesh. The synagogue was actually confiscated by the communists, and it was turned into a factory during the communist rule. But now the Jews have reclaimed it, and Torah is being taught. Okay, so I'm just about to get back to my hotel. I spent uh, the whole morning out with the community at the synagogue and then at the uh, at the college, the yeshiva. And I'm getting back to the hotel now. I love this town. Everyone is so nice. People are just stopping on the on the side of the road, you know, stopping their cars, asking me if I need a ride anywhere. Um, Everyone wants to have their photo taken. People are just stopping to wave and say hi. So, just davened by the, by the grave of Rabbi Gershom, who was one of the rabbis of this town. And now I'm gonna head down the stairs check out some other old graves here in the cemetery. Behind me is the town of Krasne Slavada, which is uh, the Jewish town. And if you can see, there's this town right here at the bottom. Now there's empty space where there's a river. And across the river is the town of Kuba. 
which is the non-Jewish part of this town. Okay, so now we're headed to another cemetery, which is older. <sighs> I don't know if you can see, but there's a really, really steep hill here, and we've just climbed it. And now, hopefully it's not too far, there's a more ancient cemetery that we're going to go check out. Oh my god, this is a workout. Oh, okay, here we are. Something weird just happened. I was walking through the cemetery and I don't know why I felt like I was gravitating towards this grave right here. So it was full of moss and quite dirty. The words were filled in with green moss. So I took a piece of wood that I found here and I cleaned it off. So here lies the beloved person. His name is Sasson Ben Menachem. Um, passed away on Tu B'Shvat in 1948 so I said I I said a tick and clully here and next week is Tu B'Shvat so God willing I'm gonna try to remember and light a candle for him and make some brachas in his merit anyway I'm gonna continue um, I'm gonna continue exploring the cemetery so this is actually the second cemetery that I went to earlier I went to one cemetery and then it was divided into two parts there was one lower part and a higher part in a really steep mountain then the boys showed me that I was supposed to come here, which is across the street. There's a whole other cemetery. It's a newer cemetery, but there are also many older graves here too. So I'm checking that out now. Okay, so I finished at the cemetery, and now I'm taking this long zigzag dirt road back into town. Um, some people don't ever go to cemeteries. Some people don't like to spend time in cemeteries. I go to cemeteries a lot and I like to spend time there. Many people think of it as creepy but I I sort of get inspired by being in cemeteries and I'll explain why. It's because only once you can understand death do you appreciate life and I feel like it's healthy to, to go to a cemetery and realize that all these people before before me have died and everyone in my generation will die and the future generations will die. Everyone's gonna die one day. So it's like you, you can't escape death, but you also want to make sure that life doesn't escape you. So if you hang out in cemeteries, in my opinion, perhaps you can get a deeper understanding of death and, and see it as a reality like you know you're spending time in a cemetery everybody there is dead and for me at least it helps me live a more meaningful life and it helps me you know remember that at some point life is gonna end and I want to make the most of it while I'm still here while I still can so that's my little wisdom for the day I'm really tired, it's about 9.20 p.m. I want to go to sleep, but I still haven't really hung out in the tea house downstairs, and all the people are there now, so I'm gonna go check it out for a little bit, and then I'm gonna come back and go to sleep. Okay, so it's evening here in town. I came outside of my room. I wanted to go into the tea house, but it is closed. Then I remembered that last night, when all the men of the town were saying Kiddush Levana, I was too busy taking pictures of them, so I didn't say it. So I just blessed the new moon. Can you see it up there? And I had a little dance out here on the street. And I went ahead inside, make myself a hot soup, and go to bed. 
need to be up early tomorrow because tomorrow is my last day in Krasne Slabada. It's early morning here and I'm on my way to Shul again. This is my last day here in Krasne Slabada for this day, I mean for this trip, so I can try to make the most of it. So far it's been wonderful, people are really nice. Um, the weather is nice and I've learned a ton. It's supposed to be a snowstorm today, so I hope that I'm able to get out of this city okay. We'll see what happens with that. As you can see here, many of the houses are really old. There's some more over here. That one's like falling apart. <sighs> many of the houses are also empty. Probably most of the houses in this town are empty as the owners of the homes live abroad. So the synagogue here is 200 years old. Um, although it looks new, it's been redone recently. It's uh, very beautiful. This is the winter synagogue. And during the summer, they use a different one, which is larger, because many people vacation here, so they do need more space. So the Persian carpets on the floor allegedly cost uh, $2,000 a piece, and I counted 15 of them. People are super friendly. I just was in the tea house where the men were playing board games and uh, smoking cigarettes, drinking tea. And I didn't have a chance to film in there, but I'll go back there later and film with them. Very jolly bunch. Everyone wanted to have their picture taken. Everybody say shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Everyone is really jolly here. I love this place. No game, no Rami Cup uh, play? Mahon, Mahon. Okay, so I'm leaving the hotel right now. It's snowing. I have to be careful going down these these stairs because last night I fell down the last stairs. Pitch black here. I didn't notice there was one last step. I fell on my face, so that was fun. Uh, this has been such an enjoyable stay here. People have been so nice. It's an all-Jewish town. Everyone trusts each other. Everyone knows each other. Wherever you go in the street, people offer you rides and, and offer you help. Everyone says hi to you. I think um, maybe one of the friendliest places I've ever visited, and I think people in general can take a a lesson from this place to be more friendly and to do more kindness. I'm heading into the car now and the rabbi said that 
we should go now before it gets dark because there are no roads, there are no lights on the road. And uh, that could get a little dangerous, especially in this weather. When it gets dark, we do not want to be driving in the dark. So we'll see you soon. Bye. Okay, so we are... Okay, good. We are on the way. We're leaving town right now. And uh, we're gonna head back to Baku. selling chickens and some kind of uh, I don't know if that's a goat or a pig or a sheep or something there's fresh fruits here at the side of the road it's uh, something I've, I've never seen before Very interesting watch it's gonna cut up another piece of meat though this guy's at the side with a campfire Okay, so I'm at a front break now in Baku. Yeah. And um, I had no idea this was going on. Why are you going on? So I just got back to my hotel. Um, it's about quarter to twelve at night. Check out this hotel. I'm not sure if they did like this on purpose or it's just the way it is, but they they gave it this ancient look. This is my room. They have an arched stone ceiling. All the furniture is very rustic and old. I love it. In three and a half hours, I have to leave here to go to the airport. So I'm going to try to get some sleep, Davin Marev, and go to bed. See you later. Have a good night.